Hi, I'm Marcia Mason. I'm an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts and I'm here to show you some textures in watercolor washes today. This is going to be a fun one. I'm going to show you five different ways to do it. Now when I talk about texture, I'm not talking about three-dimensional texture. I'm talking more about patterns that you make, a change in values in what would be a solid wash. So first I'm going to show you about salt. I've got two sizes today of salt. There we go, just a little wash there. Maybe a little more paint in there. Good, good, good. Okay, this is table salt. I'll put some that's kind of sprinkled sparsely and some that's a little thicker right through there. And then I also have a larger salt that I kind of like. It's kosher salt or brining or pickling salt. And the particles are just a little bit bigger. You'll see that as it goes down here. Just bigger particles. So we'll see how that comes out. That has to dry. When it's dry, we just rub off the salt. Um, next, I want to show you what isopropyl alcohol does. You must use the 91% isopropyl alcohol to get the effect, the really good effect. 70% is diluted just a little bit more than I like. There we go. Now I'm going to screen off my salt and just give it a light squirt. We'll see what happens. There we go. So it has aggregated the, the particles in kind of big chunks there and little ones out here. It's kind of interesting. Third, I want to show you water blossoms. Now it's kind of the same as the alcohol in that we're adding something on top that uh, disperses the pigment. This uh, salt pulls the pigment in, but the isopropyl alcohol and the water down here disperse the pigment. So let's see if I can get a little bit more there we go. A little more color in that. Alrighty, so all you have to do is get a brush real nice and wet and drop water on it. Now a lot of watercolor books say, oh, don't get blossoms, that's not a good thing. But if you decide you'd like to have blossoms, this is how you do it. See, I'm going to put one here that kind of touches this other one. There we go. And I think I will put a little more water on our big one here. And more water than that even. There we go. We'll see how that goes. It's going to be fun to see. Now, the fourth one is called incising. And all that means is that you're denting the wet paper. I like to use French ultramarine blue for this because it has granulation. That just means that the granules, the particles of pigment that are suspended in the paint medium, is uh, they're kind of large and they fall out into the little divots that are all over this cold pressed paper and it makes lovely flocculation. It's a very beautiful look in watercolor. So my, my special tool for incising my twig is missing. So I'm going to use a palette, pot, a palette knife. And this palette knife, I'm going to use two edges. I'm going to use the sharp edge and I'm going to use the more blunt or rounded edge on it to get wider, um, wider marks. And all I'm doing is just denting. Well, let's just make a little tree here. There we go. Let's see, get a little gnarly here. 
and watch that pigment go in there. Then I'll use my finer finer point for that. And maybe a little finer point for oh it's drying on me. Yes, so I'm gonna press a little harder. And there we go. There's a gnarly tree with with grasses. Maybe put a little bit of Maybe some birds out here. Yes, well, it's still it's still um, damp enough to make birds. And now what I'm going to do is take and lift a little bit of pigment. See if I can make a, a moon out here just by circling around. Oh, that's not too bad. And what I've done is, is pull the paint out of the top layer, and that paint that's sitting in the ditch didn't really get touched. It's not the best moon I've ever seen, but you get the idea. Well, now it's okay. Now it's a bigger moon. Uh, <laughs> so I want to show you the fifth and final technique to make texture in watercolor washes. And that's kind of interesting. I'm going to make some sky. And I'm going to start with some clear water. Just kind of in the shape of clouds. It's, you can see my water's a little dirty. That's okay. Yes. Okay, what I'm going to do is as I put my blue around this, I'm going to touch some of that water. And I'm going to start with darker paint at the top of the sky, because that's how skies are. Unless you're painting. Okay, here I am approaching my my wet spot. Yes, I'm going to make it a little lighter on the bottom. There we go. I'm going to touch right there. And here we go. Right in. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Yes. Okay. And now I'm just going to that down and a little bit wetter all the way. That doesn't look too cloudy, does it? I'll just bring that in a little bit. Okay. So here is a wash that you've added water to to start with. And in adding that, you've given it a, the paint a way to disperse into those vacant areas, which is kind of cool. And then we're going to do what we did before with making that uh, little moon, is we're going to take and soften some of these edges. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And maybe have some dramatic clouds that kind of come down in, in here. I'm getting a bit wet there. Yeah. needs to be a big cloud. There we go. Anyway, that's the technique. As I was doing it before, this is uh, how it came out on the, the um, paper that I was using before. So it's always different. Now I did, uh, as I came back to, to do the sky, I did discover my magic twig. So next time, you can, you can get a twig like mine and, and make nice incisions. So to review, we've got isopropyl alcohol, salt. Oh, and let me rub that salt off because it is dry now. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it came out pretty well. We've got an interesting texture. Now, if you tilt the paper as it dries, these, uh, these little markings will will also kind of fall uh, in the direction of uh, gravity. So isopropyl alcohol, salt, we've got incising. This was supposed to be water blossoms and that's a real dud, but look at these water blossoms. I used a little more pigment, it was a little less wet and I think that made all the difference. And then the incising, my wash, I think, was just a little light, but you can see where the paint went in the ditches. This 
is a little better example and it was made with my twig. So, uh, and then we have the, um, the water put down before your wash and then the, the lifting to kind of soften the edges. Thank you for joining me today for textures in watercolor washes. I'll be back with a second textures that has nothing to do with washes, um, and it'll be really fun. We're going to do some silly stuff. Uh, and uh, do watch at 4 p.m. every weekday. Ranch Cordova Arts is doing art tutorials from a bunch of us. It's fun, and it's uh, inspiring, too. Um, and if you do happen to make a painting, please post it on our Facebook page. That's Rancho Cordova Arts. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.